Eastern Europe. And we're sending Bibles over there. And I'm going to, I think we have something going on next week, don't we? But anyways. But we're going to take that offer next week. You don't want to miss that chance. I just want to read this email to you. Next week I'm going to show you some more pictures and what God is doing. I haven't showed you these yet. These are the latest ones. With the 500 Bibles you sent and the money that we sent last time, here's what Vitaly Kissel says. He says, praise the Lord. Dear Pastor Nelson, Sister Cindy, Pastor Chris, Jamie, Heather, and the entire church, he said, we have wonderful news today. This is just, he gives it, he'll send out a report every day something big happens. Thirteen people got baptized in the water in our church in Russia. That's this week. Now this is an area that's highly agnostic, atheist, or Muslim. And these people are hungry for Jesus. And they're coming to God over and over. Listen to this. He said, thank you, Jesus. We had two options, a frozen lake or rent a heated pool. They've literally baptized people in frozen lakes. Come on, that's some commitment right there, boy. That's some, you know, in America, we're like, you know, in three months, the sun will be out again and it'll all be thawed out. We can wait till then, right? <laughs> No, nah, in Russia, they're like, baptize me now, <laughs> right? And he goes on, he says, we had two options, baptize them in a lake or in a, a renovated pool, which is very expensive, but because of your wonderful support, thank God we were able to rent a heated pool for the baptism. <laughs> and I think he's saying that like, no, 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 seriously, like, thank you. <laughs> Because he's got to get in that water and baptize them too, right? <laughs> Listen to me for a second. I'm just, he says, please find the details and the pictures in the attached newsletter. He said, we want to thank you so much for your tremendous and, and, and continuous help and support. You see, I, I want to stop right here for a second. I, I know I'm, I'm going to preach. He wrote a letter to us. I'm going to stop and preach in the letter. Praise God. Anyways. <laughs> but he, you know, I, 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 this morning, the presence of God that we're, that we're feeling in this room, you know, it's the same God moving on them. Amen. Do, do you realize the, the, the church that we are a part of, how powerful it is? Do you realize, I, I showed you a couple weeks ago, bombs that went off of an uh, airstrike on, on Thanthlang, uh, Chin State, Myanmar. I, I probably butcher, if someone was Burmese here right now and heard me say that, they would be like, oh gosh, man. But oh well. They airstruck it and, it, and it bombed multiple, multiple churches in the area, and, and, I, and my heart breaks for those churches, and I, I don't mean in any way to take away from the loss that they must feel. Their, their, their compound, the compound, I told you all about that, 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 that Denzel and I stayed in while we were there, it's gone, it was bombed in that process. Many people killed in that air raid. But we dedicated a church when we were there. Come on now. We dedicated a church when we were there, and it was a, it was a little, little, little spirit-filled church, and, and they got them a brand new building, and now they have about 400 to 500 strong in that little village. Come on, man. A little village of 7,000 people. They've all had to flee over into India to get away from the, from the civil war that's taking place there right now, but they're safe. I mean, we're here now. The pastor's son was killed in a, in a firefight there, but in, in our heart breaks for him. He's 11 years old. But the majority of the church is actually safe. They're safely in India right now. But I said, Elvis, what about, the, what about the church we dedicated? He said, Chris, would you believe they missed it? And every time they drop bombs there, they miss every single time. Come on, that's the, that's the kind of body we're a part of. And I'm telling you, you you're a part of something that is bigger than you, it's bigger than me, it's even bigger than us, it's, it's, it's bigger than this universe, it's phenomenal. Listen to this for just a second. He says, we want to thank you so much for your tremendous and continuous help and support. You are a great blessing to us. May the Lord bless, come on, bless. Come on, I got any blessed people in the room today? Come on, I think I've been driving and I'm trying to, trying to get you to see, man, we're already blessed. He said, may, may he bless and reward you richly and greatly. Pastor Vitaly and ministry teams in Russia and Belarus. Rus. Next week, I'm going to show you some of those pictures of some of those dear people that have come to the Lord. And we're going to give toward that cause. Already 500 Bibles have already been distributed there. 
between Belarus and those are in Belarus, those that speak uh, Russian there in those areas, and in southern Russia. And I, I want you, to, I want you to realize what you're doing when you do that. You're planting a seed on the other side of the world. It's 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 really a selflessness to say that I, I'm not worried about like like my money is not as important to me as giving so that one person, come on now, one person's soul can be saved. And today, I, like, I, I want to I take just a few minutes, I want to hurry as fast as I can because we've worshipped a long time today, but listen to me for a second. I believe today, I was really struggling a second ago because I was like, man, right now, I just, I'm with dad, I want to go old school, let's just do the prayer time, line, that's what his generation called it. My generation called it a fire tunnel. This is where the fire of the Holy Ghost will hit you right where you're at, man. It'll just get wild in the fire tunnel. And then we used to do it in youth, and it would just be psycho crazy in a really good way. But you said psycho. Anyways. And I really, I did, but, but I, I feel like maybe, maybe that moment was there because now we're a little bit open to really think about some things. Because all that's going on in the world right now, I see, I see a tendency for us to, to, to kind of go into a shell and we, I'm going to gather my family up and we're going to take care of me and mine right now. But I want to tell you something right now. Now is the time to focus on something bigger than you. Don't let the feeling in our culture, don't let the news, don't let any of that cause you to get your eye off of the calling from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like don't, 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 get, don't let all this going on get you focused on stuff that doesn't matter as much as his kingdom matters. Because what I know is one day he's coming. He's coming. And he's going to split the clouds in the eastern sky. And when he does, I want to be a part of that group that goes home with my Lord Jesus Christ. There's going to come a, come on, there's going to come a day. He's going to return. And when he does, I want to be right beside him. I can't wait to look into his eyes. Come on, I can't wait to see him face to face. I told my dad, somebody asked me, what do you look forward to most in heaven? I said, I look forward to not having my stinking flesh to deal with anymore. I look forward to not having to deal with my own, my own selfish desires and the, all that. I look forward to just being in his presence for the rest of eternity. That's what I look forward to. I don't care, you, you, the streets of gold and all that stuff. I used to say, I used to hear old timers say, I don't care, just give me an outhouse and I'll be happy. Give me a shotgun shanty and I'll be happy. Y'all ever heard old timers say that? And I used to say, are you kidding me? I want a mansion when I get there. But now I'm starting to understand what they mean. I just want to be in his presence. Like I, I, just, I just want to be somewhere where I can feel the cleanliness of his spirit. And this morning, as I talk about what it, what it looks like to, to have a blessed legacy, I want you to realize there are people who are hungry for that same experience, to be in his presence like that. Listen to me for just a second. Next week, we're going to make a big move to, to raise the rest for those 500 Bibles. That will put us at $1,000 dollars. I'm oh, sorry, 1000 Well, you're like, $1,000, man, I can get some of y'all in here. I know y'all are loaded. Y'all are like, 1000 I can give like $5,000, dude. But <laughs> 1,000 Bibles, $13 a piece. You do the math. <laughs> That'll be $13,000 that will go to Russia this year. We've also given very much to Myanmar in the process. We're trying to, trying to see some new doors open up and get in some other places. But God's just opened those doors there. We feel led to make just... just just make a point in those places. Give to those places. Because if, if we can give more money to fewer places and make a bigger difference, I want to do it. Amen? Amen? This week, there were three deaths that affected this church. Friday, Dad and I drove over to East Texas. And when I tell you we went to a cemetery in the backwoods of nowhere, Dad... We went down a dirt road to a church building that was built in 1861. I forgot, when I was a kid, I, I remember I'd seen this before because we'd, four, we'd, we'd ride four-wheelers all back through some of these spaces when I was a kid and, and get lost back in there. 
God, our poor parents, boy, they were praying like crazy. Bigfoot, Dad said. I said, man, you know there's black bears out here. Dad said, black bears? Bigfoot. <laughs> and so we, get, we, 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 we turn on a dirt road off of one of the roads there. It goes to a little place called Apple Springs, Texas. And then we turn on another dirt road. <laughs> and then we're down to, at this point to a little old path. It's, it's one of them dirt roads that literally has grass growing in the middle. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we're back in here. And we drive back in there, and it pops out, and there's an old cemetery there and, and an old church there. And believe it or not, people still go to church there. They travel out in the middle of no. We got people driving by church, and they're like, I don't have time to stop by. I, I know it's just right there. Praise God, one day I'm going to do it. These people drive out in the middle of nowhere to go to church from town. <laughs> And so they, they get, we get back in there, and, and we're there for, I don't know if many of you guys heard, heard this guy's name, but when I say it, a lot of you are going to remember him, Billy Rex Rudd. If you go to our Facebook, you see, I think we posted a picture of Billy Rex Rudd this week. Did we Did we that one yet? In, in Facebook family group. And it was a picture of Billy Rex Rudd on relaunch Sunday when we kind of changed things and relaunched our church back in 2018. And there's Billy Rex. And he's got his little blue t-shirt on. His, daughter, his, his daughter-in-law and son said he wore that shirt almost every day. That was his favorite shirt. And you know what was on the front of it? Billy Rex was, had done well for himself. He, 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 had, he had been a contractor and built houses all over the place. And, and, and he, he had come from, he would always tell us, you don't know where God's brought me from. I was a bad man. And to us, we were like, there's just no possible way. Rex Rudd, that you were ever a bad man. <laughs> you ever met people like that? I mean, just, there's no way. And, and Rex, I mean, this morning, I don't know, I might toss my notes. I just feel that, I feel that. Just listen to me for a minute. I want to lay this on. I hope you really get this this morning. Rex, I didn't know this about Rex. They started telling us Rex was a bad alcoholic. Well, I mean, like, bad alcoholic. Had been raised around church as a kid. He just, he, he was pretty, he could do pretty well for himself, but he always climbed back in a bottle. And Rex finally one morning went to church, and it's the church my granddad pastored before in Kennard, Texas, off Highway 7. It's on the other side of Crockett for a little reference for you. Some of y'all are like, I have no idea what places you're talking about. Yeah, they're all small towns. And Rex Rudd went to church one morning. He went back to church. I believe as a little boy, he was raised in that church. Of course, this was long before my granddad had ever pastored there. And the new pastor there is Keith Smith, wonderful guy. And Rex come into church on a Sunday morning, lifted his hands to heaven and said, Feel me, God. I, I'm at the end of my rope. And you know what God did? He filled him with his spirit that morning. And Rex got baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. And then Rex had to move out here to Waco, and we got, we, we were blessed with Rex Rudd. Come on. And I, I, didn't, I wasn't going to talk about this this morning, but as I, as I look around the room, and the, and the, as I see the, the glory of God on your faces as you're in your presence, in his presence, I just, this, this, this struck me, like just seeing him when he used to worship down here. And I wish I could put his picture up so you just see it, just the sweet man he was. And, and when he got here, he, he was a part of relaunch. And Rex wasn't just a part of relaunch. Rex was the first man, it was either him or Linus Gilbert were the first guys you saw when you approached the church. They were, they, we, they were, the, they were what we call our outward extension of our hospitality team. They were out there at the parking lot with a smile on their face saying, welcome to church this morning. We're so glad you're here. In other words, he, he went from being completely out of the kingdom of God to going to the front lines of the battle. And with a smile on his face, he shook hands and he loved others. And he passed down something to his son. His son, I'm not going to say how much it was, but it was, a good, it was a big amount. He wrote a check and he handed it to me. And he said, Dad talked about River City every day. He talked about how wonderful everyone was there to him. That's you, River City. See, he made a mark on us, but guess what? In turn, you made a mark back on him. 
And he said, today I want to write this check and give it to you. Whatever cause, whatever big thing y'all got going right now, I just want this to be in memory of my dad. Because whatever happened between the two churches, whether it was Truth Tabernacle or Tabernacle of Praise, I'm sorry, in Kennard and River City, whatever happened between those two churches as he was in them completely changed who he was. And this happened to him late in life. Maybe you're sitting in this room and you think, well, I'm too old to make any changes right now. Well, I believe... I believe Rex was north of 70 when he made the decision to come to Jesus. And in his death, that money's going to go to put a Bible in a little boy or a little girl's hand or a teenager's hand who otherwise can't get one. In some of those areas, they're illegal, so they're having to under the table, disperse them out to people just so that they can read the good news of the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this morning, like, I, I really, I, I ask you the question, what legacy will you leave? Will it be a legacy of blessing? Will it, will it, will it be a le legacy of generosity, a legacy of love to others? And then yesterday we come in here, pastor son, which that's dear to me because I, I, I'm a pa I'm a pa I've been a pastor son in this church in high school coming up. One of our dear pastor sons, Paul Douglas Hennigan, went on to be with the Lord last week, and, and we laid him to rest yesterday. And the legacy that he left, one of the greatest things to me is that his all of his kids are in all of his children, his four kids, they're in church to some of them are in this room this morning not only that he was a he's a he's a hall of fame uh, fast pitching coach he's put many girls into college on, on college scholarships as, as pitchers loved kids you should have heard some of the stories that were written in about him the kind of man he was these are great men. And I thought about it yesterday. You know, good men leave memories. But legends leave a legacy. I thought about Paul yesterday, and I, I was telling his grandchildren this the other day, or yet, le later yesterday, and I, I said, I said, you know, your granddad's legacy is going to, there he is, there we go, Rex Rudd. Thank you all for pulling out. It's Billy Rex Rudd. Come on, man. That's all right. I was made for this. And I don't know if we still have any pictures of Paul. He, he comes sometimes, but I mean, you talk about a guy that knew his word and he still talked to the Lord. There you go. There's Paul Hennigan. Dad said he thought he was an Indian chief first time he'd ever saw him because he was so dark with that white hair. He's a cool dude. I like what one of his nephews said. He was something like James Dean, really. <laughs> he just didn't care <laughs> what you thought. But he lived a good life. He was kind to others. He taught his kids to work hard. And I think about that. I told one of the grandkids, I said, you know your granddad, his legacy, he, I, I told him also, he's one of the first famous people I ever knew. I never knew anybody who was in the Sports Hall of Fame. He is. <laughs> I said, but the thing is, my daughters, he was born in the 40s. If God wills, they're going to live on into the 50s or the 60s probably. Boy, ain't that something to think about for those of us born in the 20th century. It's like being, I was born in 1985. That's like, for us and our experience, it's like meeting somebody that was born in 1885, right? <laughs> Good Lord, I'm getting old. Anyways, last century. But my, my, my kids, like, my kids remember him, and, and she was talking about him because he was so good with kids. Every little kid, I bet, has a story like that. And I, I said, you realize your, your granddad's legacy 
is going to live beyond 100 years? Like, do you think you, you realize that? Like, he's not just going to be a, a name in a, in, a, in a book somewhere in a family tree. No, there's going to be, be, a, be, a, there's going to be people 100 years after he was born and even, even further that are going to actually remember him and remember the impact that he made on their lives. Think about that for a second. And this morning, like, I wonder, like, how, how will people remember you? How will I be remembered? And that bothers me when I think about it sometimes. Listen to this, Psalms 112, 5 through 6 reads like this. says, good will come to him who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. He says, surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered for Ever. And I, I don't know why, but Dad and I have really felt a, a vein into just slow down for a minute before we, a lot of churches are, we've been through some things over the last couple of years. A lot of you in your workplaces, if you're a business owner, you've been through some things the last couple of years. But I just feel like, like really led to, to slow down for a second. Let's go back to the basics. Let's get a hold of something. We're all reaching out for blessings monetarily, but you're already blessed. Like, it, I don't give because I'm seeking blessing. I give because I'm already I, I'm already saved. Like, the, that's the greatest blessing. I don't care if I die a pauper because if I go to heaven, I'm rich. Some of y'all know where that voice came from. That was an accident. <laughs> Little Chappelle there. No, like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm rich. Like, I'm, I'm already rich. You know, I, I'm already rich. Y'all know who my dad is? Chris, you don't, you, 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 you need to get a new car, bro. You, your car, like, no, no, I'm going to run the wheels off that sucker because I'm already rich. Like, no, you, you, but you don't have a mansion or anything. Like, no, psh, that right there? This is my temporary house. You ought, to see, you ought to see my mansion that I'm going to, right? This is just my summer home, right? Come on. Like, like, but, but, but it don't look, you, you, you know, it don't, it don't, I, I want to I strut. Like, I, I want to be that person, you know, who, like, I want to have all the stuff. I want everybody... Really, at the end of the day, the question is, do you just want everybody to be jealous? So I want to be a stumbling block. Now, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. I like nice things. Amen? I'm not, I'm not, yeah, did somebody say, but you have kids? It's like, right, exactly. That's why I can't have nice things. <laughs> And I, I talked to somebody the other day, I know the, the, youth, the youth section over here, like, that's not nice, man. That's not very, that's not very nice. But it's true. You finally get to a place where you, you're not hurting anymore. You finally make a little better. You're doing okay. God's blessing you. But then you had kids. So you look around one day and you realize, I still got about the same amount of money I had when I was 22 years old. Awesome. But I'm blessed, you know why? Because I got a future. Because when I pass home from this earth, I got four little girls. And they're going to talk about dad. And I, I, man, I hope, I hope my kids talk about me as well as, as Paul has talked about him. I hope my kids talk about me as well as Rex Rudd's kids talk about how he finished. Yeah, he may have struggled for years, but how he finished. My God, how he finished. And it says that a righteous man will be remembered forever. And this word legacy, I really, I really, when I look up the word legacy, you see sometimes it's an endowment or, a, or, or, or inheritance passed on. That's one of the first definitions you'll see. And it, so it's speaking of monetary meanings, and as you keep going, you see that it's, it's, it's memories that are shared, or, or sometimes it's a bad thing. Legacy sometimes can be uh, not such a good thing. There's been a legacy of evil, and, and, and if you know, if you've been around legacies of evil, it's like they're just so good at being evil. They're just so good. 
North Korea. They are so good at being, you know, they really pride themselves. <laughs> but I wonder, like, we always pick on that side. But, but like, I wonder how much, how much evil that we've become good at being. We, we, we talk about the guy who, who kills their people if they speak out against them and does all that. But how many people do we kill their spirits? How many people have, have we killed the, any opportunity of God making a difference in their life because it's kind of like the bumper sticker, Jesus, please save me from your fan club. And I wonder, like, really, like, like what, what kind of legacy? And I'm not being mean this morning. It's something I've been asking, really, over the last couple of days, really asking myself, how am I going to be remembered? And, and quite frankly, with the way I view myself, some of y'all may look in the mirror and just be like, man, look at you, dude. Some of y'all, you like that, right? There's some wives right now. You, your husband gets up every morning. His hair's going 50 different directions, if he has hair. <laughs> he definitely has back hair, though. <laughs> My wife's face right now. I'm telling it. The other day, I was sitting there brushing my teeth, and she goes, where did all this back hair come from? And I said, you ought to see my ears. <laughs> but it's always sunny in man world, right? We get up, we look in the mirror, and we're like, nailed it. But sometimes I get honest with myself. What kind of legacy am I leaving? How will I be remembered? How are my girls going to remember me? It really bothers me a little bit because it, you know as well as I do, parents, you, you constantly do something and then you, you, you cringe and you think, oh, why did I do that? And really, legacy is where my life lives on. And this morning, giving to something is what, that, that, that will outlive me is what I want to focus on for just a minute. I want to give them my time, whether it be of my, with my children or serving at church, those types of things. I want to give my time, my treasures. Yeah, you know what? The Word does tell us to give. It does. As a matter of fact, if you go to Malachi, people always bring this up. They say, well, but then... But, but Pastor, that, that, that's in the Old Testament. Well, Jesus, in reference to this, actually said, hey, a lot of people like to talk when he's talking about mercy and justice and all that, and he said, you've left all that. Yeah, you give a lot of money, but you leave all this undone, and you don't take care of the widows, and you, you don't take care of the orphans, you don't, you don't do that. And a lot of people read that and go, see, see, as long as I take care of the widows and orphans, I don't have to worry about the other. But that ain't what Jesus said. He actually said, don't leave that undone but also take care of the widows and orphans. Here's why. Because in Malachi, God makes a, a what, you, what you would call kind of a, a universal uh, claim. I don't mean that religiously universal. I mean, I mean like, like, a, like a claim that can go all throughout Scripture and can still be true today. When he says, listen, test me, bring a tenth in, test me and see that I won't do what I said that I would do. And what happens with that is, and I'm telling you what happens, God uses that to grow his legacy in this world. And this morning, like that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that next week, but this morning, I just want to get down to the heart of it, really. It's really living my life so that my life outlives me. Because the fact of the matter is, my life will probably outlive me, but how will it outlive me? Will it be that I was a dirty dog? Or will it be that I was a good man, a righteous man? Because the fact of the matter is, after a few hundred years, my name may not be spoken of, but the lives that was touched by my life may have been to reached out, touched other lives, and there's souls who are saved and going to heaven because we touched somebody 200 years before. Come on. Come on. 
And so today I, I want to ask you this question. It's a two-question test, and I'm going to hurry from this point forward. I'm going to be done pretty quick. Listen to me. Romans 14, 10 through 12 says this. says, you then, why do you judge your brother or your sister, or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. Oh, oh, no, no, I'm going to do things my way. Oh, no, one day your knees are going to bow. One day, like, like I, I was thinking about that the other day, I, I was listening, there was, there was a TikTok video. I'm not on TikTok. I'm afraid of TikTok. But I, I, I do follow this site, uh, uh, or this page on Instagram that's called uh, something, of the, uh, something of TikTok. I can't remember exactly what it is. And it's just these crazy videos that they brought over from TikTok and they show. And it was this person talking about how I don't believe in God. Oh, come on a second. Hold on, hold on. I'm about to show you something. I don't believe in God and I don't believe in Lucifer. But they still said this. I still consider myself a Satanist. Because I am my own God. And I thought about that for a minute. I'm going to wrap this, this, this up today uh, kind of on this concept right now. See, a lot of us, we don't realize it, but when we say, God, I know your word says this, but that's a little much. I don't know if I need to do all that. I don't think it's appropriate to do all this, to worry about feeding, feeding the hungry and, and healing the sick and all that. By the way, we served almost 200 cars. I, believe, I haven't seen the final numbers this week. Families, hundreds of families are being affected by shepherd's heart, and we get to be a part of that. And then we sent two, I think two of that was, it probably ended up being, people still bring in a little late, we're going to still get it over there, but we sent about three boxes, that's what we wanted to do, worth of toys. So there's, there's some kids in Waco, Texas that didn't have really, their parents didn't have any money to really get them a good, meaningful Christmas present this year. You got them Christmas presents. They're going to have a good Christmas this year. So the question is, what, what, what am I doing with my life that lives on and affects change with others? I think I started a story a while ago, but I'm ADD. We're going to move on from that one. Amen? <laughs> so really, the, 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 the two question tests today, and I've actually asked this question before. The first one is this, what have you done with my son Jesus? And this is really at the core of it. It's, it's really not about money. You see, if it was all about money, that we, we would be serving mammon. That's not what we're serving. And when we start talking about this subject, we all, a lot of us, we have a tendency, we start, we start backing away from it. We don't like that one. That's, that's what I was saying a second ago, is that when I get to a place where I tell God, you know, God, I don't think what you wrote in your word is really that necessary. What I'm saying is I'm a Satanist because I am my own God. Man, you can hear a pin drop, except for that little dude right there. Praise God. Preach with me, bro. He has no idea what money means, so he's like, yeah. No. And I'm not, today, I, I, I'm bringing that up because I want to go to the core of it today. I want to get down to where the rubber meets the road because it's not about money. He says, what have you done with my son? Jesus, Revelations 20, 11 through 12, then I saw a great white throne, him who was seated on it, the earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, the great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which was the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done is recorded in the book. See, we're going to see judgment day. One day we're going to stand there, and the question's not going to be, do, Jesus isn't going to be sitting there asking me, do you know me? Because a lot of people say, oh, I know Jesus. The question is, does Jesus know you? And this morning, like, there's a lot of us like, well, I accepted Jesus, but my question to you is, has Jesus accepted you? 
Matthew 7, 21 through 23, not, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So a lot of us, there's a lot of people who are saying, well, but, but see, I know Jesus, Lord, Lord, I call on his name, Lord, Lord. But he's saying, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does. Here it is, right here. You ready? The will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, we did we, we did not prophesy, or did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your, your name perform many miracles, but I, I got all these signs, wonders, and miracles. The Bible actually talks about the evil generation that chases after that stuff. A lot of people, I, I know a lot of people, we, we, one time we, we started having revival services here, people were getting healed and everything, and it was like the revolving church walked in the back door. And you'd ask them, where do you go to church? Oh, I don't go to church anywhere. God, I am called. God, I go wherever God calls me. I submit to no biblical, really don't submit to biblical principles. I, I really, really don't do the will of God when he actually tells me that I, want, I need to be in relationships with people who will tell me the truth about myself. I, I don't mean this to be mean by any means this morning. I, I'm just saying that it's, it's, also, it's also the group, they're, they're chasing after those signs, wonders, and miracles, but they're not chasing after the will of God. He goes on, he says, he says, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil Doers. And that brings us to our next question. So that's what do you do with Jesus? Here's the next question this morning as we're wrapping up. What did you do with what I gave you? We know the parable of the talents. Master goes away, gives one man five talents, gives one man two talents, gives one man one talent. He says, well, I'll be back. I'll be back, right? My money better be here. So he comes back, man, he got five talents, doubled it, he got ten now. See, he, he, he grew it, he worked it, he plowed. Man, it was given two talents, he doubles it to four. But, last man, he got one talent, he dug a hole, dropped it in the hole, covered it up. And it, I think it's key what happens when he gets back, the master, the, the first guy comes to him and says, I doubled your, your, your talents, master. Here you go. You, you think that, that guy was very blessed. Second guy comes, I, I doubled your talents, master. Here you go. He was very blessed. But the last guy, what he says is key right here. He says, I know you to be a very hard man. And it's right there where a lot of us find ourselves. Do you view God as a loving God? Or do you view him as a little kid with a magnifying glass burning ants? Yes, I did just take that reference from the ant bully. The ant bully, by the way, didn't hold anything on me. While when I was a kid, I had one of those long fire starters for the fireplace and hairspray. <laughs> he said, dang, I said, that's right, son. I called in airstrikes like crazy on ants. I hate fire ants. I still don't know why they exist. <laughs> Actually, they do clean up a lot. But anyways. But see, a lot of us view God that way. We view God through the lens of he's a harsh, angry God. And you know why we view him that way is because we're constantly in contention with him. We view him as a hard, angry God because we're constantly resisting him. We're turning against his will and his flow. It's a flow thing. Blessings is a flow thing. I've talked about this a lot. I've, my dad's talked about flow my whole life, and it's a flow thing. In other words, God's kingdom is moving where it's moving, with or without me. And I can either turn against his will and try to swim upstream and have two handfuls toiling after the wind, or I can be happy with what he's given me and just ride the river. 
And so many of us, instead of just going with the will of God, being obedient to his word and and telling others about Jesus, making an impact on other people, we say to that, you know, I don't think that's really necessary. I'm already saved. I've already called on the name of the Lord, so I'm saved. And I wonder, is that, like if I was that person who said that, am I the one he's referring to when he says, many will say, Lord, Lord, I did all these things. I gave that homeless guy a dollar that day. That's good enough, right? I want to ask you a question. What can, can you buy one little sack of ramen noodles for a dollar? <laughs> but I, I, I tipped, I kind of, and so we have an approach toward God where I, I kind of tip God. I tip him with my time. I'll come, like, like church, as long as, man, I didn't mean to be rough this morning. God, God, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I'm not trying to be mean to you this morning. I really feel this morning God is looking for a committed people. He's looking for a righteous people because there's going to be a revival and he's not going to give it to people who are half-hearted. But I wonder, like, when it's said and done, where will I stand? Will I be the one who said, no, I did it my way. And I, I love Frank Sinatra, but Frank, I don't want to do it your way, bro. I, I, like, in the end of my life, I don't want to sing, I did it my way. I want him to sing, but Chris did it God's way. Come on. Like, and it rhymes with Yahweh. Look at that. Man, my dad's a rapper, and y'all didn't even know. And I'm taking a minute this morning. I'm, I'm almost finished. Matthew 16, 27 says, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. Did I do things, though, God's way, or did I do it my way? Did I, did I turn and kick against the pricks? Did I, did I turn and kick against the will of God and try to do it my way? And that's why, that's why I find myself unhappy, unblessed, I got a lot, but my God, I got to work so much to have it. And my question is today, is it, like, is it, is it really worth it? And I'm not telling you not to work hard. My God, we got, can't even get people to go back to work right now. Please, we, people, work, we need hard workers in this world. But I, I'm telling you, like, some of us are completely consumed by it. Because we want more, and I got to have more, and I got to have more. And my question is, is the more making you happy? And what kind of legacy is it leaving with my kids? 2 Corinthians. Remember, this is the question. What did you do with what I gave you? 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and each one may receive what is due to him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And here's the difference. Here's the difference. Am I driven... By my own desires, or am I driven by eternity? Because when I get an eternal focus, what goes on around me doesn't change the way I view God because now I realize, oh no. You might knock me down, but guess what happens? I get up. I've always said this, I used to tell youth this. If I trip, see, if I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, if I stumble and fall and mess up, you know what happens? I stumble and fall forward. And then when I get up, you know what I do? I take another step forward, and I keep on moving forward. You can knock me down, but my eyes are always on Jesus. I may have slipped up, made a mistake, but my eyes are still on Jesus. I may have have said something wrong, done something wrong, but my eyes are on Jesus. Jesus, and I'm going to show you that here in just a second. Listen to me. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also set eternity in the human heart. See, we try to fill things. There's a God-sized hole in us, and we try to 
feel those things. I was just talking to a friend about a mutual friend the other day, and we were talking about this. He says, I'm a little worried about it. I said, why is that? Said, they're, they're, they're chasing after things, but I can tell the more they chase after things, they try to convince you, oh, yeah, I'm successful. I'm doing great. But there's a darkness and an unhappiness beginning to set in on them. And I said, see, that right there, all of us are praying the will of God and that they would come to salvation. And what we're doing is, we, because I really believe that, if, and they have said before they wanted the will of God in their life, so the fact of the matter is, this is a good thing. She said, that's a good thing. I said, it's a good thing. Because what's happening is they're starting to find out that nothing in this world can make them happy. They're starting to realize that the only joy, peace, and contentment, the only blessing in this world is to know who my Savior is and to know Him and for Him to know me and for me to live in relationship with Him. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to be driven by eternity. I wonder if you'll join me this morning in saying this. That means if I'm driven by eternity, I will intentionally give of what I have. Anybody just, just you know what, if you're still thinking about that, that's okay. I understand. But you say, you know what, I'm going to give of what I have. And I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about time. I'm going to serve. I'm going to plug in in this next year coming up. Chris, you know what, dude? I in here. We always said that. We used to say this all the time, and I'm going to get back to saying it now. Give us a year of your life. And I mean really give a year of your life. Stay committed to the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you right now, your life will not be the same. Well, I can, I'll come a little bit. I'll tip God with my time. I'll come a few times a month, and that, that should be good enough for God. Like, I want, I want my heart to be turned to a place where I'm going, God, what more can I do to make you happy, right? Like, God, God, what more, like, there's an old concept we used to say when I was a little boy. Maybe this is just Pentecostal kids, but maybe other kids, maybe if you're Baptist, maybe y'all said it too. Every time we did something great, what did we say, Jamie? It's another star in my crown, right? Come on, what if we started getting focused on investing and putting stars on my crown more than worried about all the stuff I got to impress other people? Come on, that's an eternal, that's an eternal focus. So I intended to give of what I have. For 2 Corinthians says this, uh, 9 says this, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. The fact of the matter is God wants to bless you because he wants you to be generous. But, but Chris, I want to enjoy. Oh, oh no, you can enjoy. The fact of the matter is if you'll be generous with what God gives you, he'll give you so much that you can't give, give enough of it away to the point that you're so stinking blessed that you're just sitting there going, well, okay, I guess that's what. And I, I, I told somebody one time, I said, my dream is that one day I'll write a million dollar check from River City Church to some, some mission somewhere. Come on, come on, would y'all like to do I would love to be able to write a million dollar check from River City. Now, some of you here were like, wait, you want to give us a minute? We're going to give, huh? Second thing is this, I will intentionally serve others. Matthew 20, 26, as the musicians come back, 26 to 28. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you, your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Remember that, that Savior I was talking about earlier? I was telling our worship team before we come out this morning. I was looking at, any of you guys follow any science? Wave at me if you follow science pages on Instagram and Facebook. I followed one the other day, and if you know anything about the Hubble telescope and, and some of the pictures that they've taken, I followed one the other day, and it was showing the size of Earth compared to other planets and uh, moons and stars and things like that in our solar system, in, in our galaxy. And so, as we were looking at it, you start realizing Earth is like a little P, P dot compared to other things in our, in our galaxy. But they found a black hole, they, they started noticing an extremely dark spot in space. So they set Hubble telescope to it, they zoomed in on it, and they actually opened up the lens, they opened up the shutters for four months to allow all the light to come through. If there was any light on the other side of that, 
they wanted to see. And what they ended up getting at the end of four months was just, it looked like a cluster of stars in this black hole. So as they realized, like, we're looking through something. Not sure what we're looking through here, but we're looking through something. And it looked like just clusters of stars everywhere. And then they got to where they could zoom in a little closer on it, and they began to realize that's not a cluster of stars, man. Man. <laughs> Come on. You start getting out in the universe, looking out in space and stuff. That right there is some, whoo. That's not stars, man. That's galaxies. And when I saw that, I didn't think, well, wow. I didn't doubt. I, I saw that and I thought to myself, my God. He created all that. He talked about things like that. He, he, he basically told us a couple times in Scripture, I got stuff you don't know about. I know you think you got me figured out, but you don't know hardly anything about me. You just know a little. And do you realize that same God robed himself in flesh according to Scripture? He served men. Well, Chris, I, I don't know. I, I, I believe, but I, I like I this is I, I'm really gonna push this for a while. Do you know who's in the room right now? Do you do you know who we have the opportunity to serve? Yet he chose to serve you and me. We, we say that that's, yeah, I get that. That's good. But if we really understood it this morning, I saw some of you on your knees because I could tell there, there, was, there was a click there. You went, My God, do you realize who's in the room? Who's, I know we, we, we've been taking a little longer in these services lately. I, I know when we go back to two services eventually, we're not going to be able to take this long maybe. But right now, let's, let's love it. Let's just take advantage of this time to really lean into the presence of God. Do you know who, who is in the room? And I'm asking you over and over again because I really, I think if we ever really got a hold of who it is that we're feeling, like every time I come in the door, I would just be so ready to be in his presence. He gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Let's bring us to the third thing. I will intentionally share Christ. I'm going to share it. And that's what you're doing. Like I wonder this year, how many people, I asked our leaders this morning, I said, how many people has God put you in front of in the last few months? And it just seems like something's going on there. And it's not, it's not just a normal situation. God has, and I'm going to be careful how I say this because I don't, it, we, we, we do record and you can watch, listen on, on YouTube, but, but. I'm going to be careful how I say this, but God has put me with a pastor, and we seem, he, he's a pastor, he's not my, our denomination, but we just seem there's something kindred there, there's something going on there, and, and the other day he told me a book he was reading, and I looked at him, and I went, oh, buddy, that one's not in your denomination. He said, no, it's not. As a matter of fact, that one comes from us spirit-filled crazy people. He looked at me, and he said, I just want all of what God has. Hey, uh, I think we need to get together. You see, there's people all around you. God's got a plan for their life, but you, he put you in that moment with them. He put you in that place with them because he has a legacy for you to build. And if you'll build his legacy, he's going to leave you with one. This morning, I wondered, like, what would happen, listen, 2 Corinthians 5, 20 says, we are Christ ambassadors. God is making the appeal through us. Luke 14, 23 says, go out to the country. Urge every, anyone you find to come in so that my house will be full. See, God wants a full house on Sundays. Mark 16, 15 says, Jesus said, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to, to everyone. And here's why. 1 Timothy 6 and 17 says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put, on, put their hope in wealth, 
which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. See, God wants you to enjoy it. He does. I really do believe that. I'm not picking on you this morning. You did work hard. He wants you to enjoy that, but he wants you to take care of the first fruits first. My time and my talent. What am I? There's some of you here, you, you have great business minds. Guys, I'm not a business mind. I couldn't organize my way out of a wet paper bag. But I, can't, I, I got my eyes fixed on something. And see, you got a mind to help, help the kingdom go forward. But my question is, are you, are you doing that? Like, what, what are you doing to help God's kingdom? See, God wants it to go beyond just your own gain. He wants to take it to another level where you actually begin to build his kingdom on this earth. And the more you build his kingdom, the more he's going to build your kingdom. And you keep on building his kingdom, and he's going to build your kingdom. Because you cannot outgive God. Because for every 10% you give, he's going to give you 90. There's more in this life. He says, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly like the real life. And so today, my last, as you stand up, my last scripture, I said I wasn't going to take long, and man. Just be patient, just a few more minutes. Because we can make a decision today, I can, and, and really it comes down to this. Everything comes down to this. Everything I've, we've been preaching about for nine solid weeks that he didn't like. <laughs> I've been, they're going to be so, they're going to be like, we're not going, but we hate Chris. He's always picking on our kid. No, I think he's awesome. He's an awesome dude. But listen to me for a second. All that we, all this has been focused in on, it really comes down to one simple thing. Psalms 37, 22. I'm going to read through 27. It's my last scripture today. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. And he says the steps of, in this right here, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You know, I pray this all the time, and a lot of us, we pray this all the time. God, order my steps. This scripture got a flip side too. A good man allows God to order his steps. In other words, I, I put myself in the place of being a good man when I say, God, okay, that's your way, I'll do it your way then. Because what I'm saying when I say, well, God, I know you want me to do that, and I know you got, but that's for somebody else, that's not really for me. What you're saying is, is no, I don't, I don't really want my footsteps ordered of the Lord, but this morning I'm trying to tell you that if you'll make a decision and say, God, I'm going I'm I'm to give these feet are yours, my life is yours, I'm going to look at that, those 66 books, God, I'm going to live this the best I can, and God, I'm not, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to get to a place where I just simply say, yes, Lord, whatever you have for me, whatever you want to do for me, do it, I'll take it. He says, the steps of a good man, I'm reading it to you again, are ordered of the Lord and he delights in his, will, in his way. He being God delights in his way. He loves to see you when you do it his way. Listen, though he fall, he shall not, he shall not be utterly cast down. What did I just tell you a while ago? See, a man who's put his life in the, in the will of God, sometimes he does fall. There's somebody in this room, you, you fall in and you, you think God's done with you. He's not finished with you. Because the day you said, God, I'll do it your way, he said this. He said, when you fall down, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to keep on walking. When you fall down, see, I want you to keep your eyes fixed on the prize, okay? Keep your eyes fixed on eternity. Listen to me for a second. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, yet 
I have not seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen it. Come on, he's telling you right there. From the time I was a young man, now that I'm an old man, I can tell you this. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends. And his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil. Do good. Eternity. And dwell forevermore. Remember, a righteous man will be remembered forever. Right here. Will you make a decision to simply say, you know what, God? I'll do it your way. But today's not some profound theological message. It's just really kind of down rubber meets the road. It's really where it all starts. It's simply saying, I choose the tree of life or I choose the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And as for me and my house, we choose the tree of life. I don't need to know it all. I just need to know the one. Come on, I don't need to know how to do everything perfect. I just need to be close to the perfect one. Come on, as these guys begin to sing this morning, let's lift our hands to heaven right now. As our altar team comes down, if you would like to fill this altar space, to simply say, I make the decision. You can do it today. In Jesus' name, God, every person under the sound of my voice, I plead your blood over them right now. Lift your hands to heaven if you say, Chris, I want to do it God's way. With your hands lifted right now. There you go. Beautiful. God, we choose to do things your way. God, we choose you, not my own desire, not my own selfishness. I want to do it your way. Great is your Come on, if you need to come to the altar, name, this is your opportunity. Your faithful name. I'm still in your